Supermarkets are a great place to get your hands on Japanese food items at a great price. Today I'm going to introduce you to 10 items that I've chosen which are my personal favorites and I'll show you why they are so awesome. Since we have so much to show you, we've divided this into two parts. This is part one of our supermarket food haul. Good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Tabi Eats. I'm Satoshi. And I'm Shinichi. Now, every time you surprise me with some very interesting gadgets, mm -hmm. and I always don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So I thought today, since we all know how much I love supermarkets. Mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce you or I'm going to introduce you guys to the 10 things that I think everyone should buy at a Japanese supermarket. A lot of people buy Kit Kats, Pocky Sticks to take back home with them. But I think there are other good stuff to take back home. And I think supermarkets are one of the best places to buy these things because they are much cheaper mm -hmm. than a souvenir shop. So are you ready? Because I prepared 10 yes. things for you today. Yes. I'm very, very looking forward to try them. Okay, I hope you guys are ready. So we're gonna start off with this. Can you guys guess what the most popular beverage is among Japanese people? Koda. <laughs> Wrong! It's green tea. And if you like green tea, you should buy some green tea while you're here in Japan. Because you have a lot of varieties of green tea. Mm -hmm. Number two, they are much cheaper if you buy it here in Japan. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite supermarkets is Seiyu. Um, by the way, we are. this video is not sponsored by Seiyu. <laughs> just to let you guys know, although, I mean, we think it should be sponsored by Seiyu, but it's not, unfortunately. But this is the Seiyu brand. Because it's their own brand, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, a, it's super, super reasonable. This is green tea, and, and these are tea bags. This box comes with 20 packets of tea, and it's only 179 yen. Oh, pretty reasonable. It's pretty reasonable, yeah. It's only like about a dollar fifty cents in mm. US dollars. And this is pretty good quality. They're using mm. tea from mm -hmm. Shizuoka, my mother's hometown. Mm -hmm. So I brewed some tea for you. And mm. um, oh. there you go. Please try Thank some. You. I want you to try this Seiyu brand green tea. Um, I drink more green tea than you do. You, you're a coffee drinker, but yes. tell me what you think of this green tea. Cool. It's pretty good, huh? Pretty good. You can't, you can't mm. tell that it's a cheap brand. Mm. This tea has a tea sweetness. Yes. It's not sugar sweetness, it's tea sweetness. Yes, it's very, very well balanced. It's mm. not too bitter. Mm. You know, it's super, super well balanced. Mm. Oh. Yeah. It contains matcha. It contains a little bit of matcha, oh. yeah, which, which gives that little bit of sweetness mm. to it, yeah. They also sell other types of tea, such as hoji tea, which is my other favorite tea. Roasted so, tea. Roasted, roasted tea. tea, yeah. So um, choose which one you like and buy some and take it home. Number two, now this is something I'm sure you've never tried. Mm -hmm. And I've tried once before and really? I, I really like this a lot. You know, um, you can buy miso everywhere in the world, pretty much everywhere in the world these days. You know, miso is pretty popular, but I've never seen this one even in Hawaii before. Oh. Yeah, this is a type of miso. It, it's already prepared so that you can use it for almost everything except miso soup. You can't use this for miso soup. Why? This is more like a seasoning slash sauce. So you can use this to make stir fries, for example. You can eat this with cold tofu. You can use oh. this as a sauce for oh. tonkatsu pork cutlet. Tonkatsu pork yeah. cutlet. Or like Japanese oh. hamburger steak. <laughs> hamburger can, steak. Yeah, you can use this as a ah. miso for oden. But so ah, many uses mm. for this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, so mm -hmm. I prepare some vegetable sticks for you, Satoshi. And look mm -hmm. at the deep, deep color wow. of this particular miso. Wow. Reminds me wow. of the miso in Nagoya that mm -hmm. they eat. Mm -hmm. It Kamiso. actually kind of mm -hmm. tastes like that, mm -hmm. yeah. And FYI, people in Nagoya eat their tonkatsu not with tonkatsu sauce. They eat it with this type of miso. Mm. Go like ahead. Kimasu. I'm gonna eat with this daikon radish. Mm. Good choice. Mm. Good choice. Well, while you're going Ooh. for the daikon, I might as well have a cucumber. It's rich and thick looking. Mm, and it tastes good too. Daikimasu. Mm. Mm. Isn't it delicious? It has sweetness. It's sweet. Sweet it's, miso. Yeah, it's a sweet mm. miso. But it has so much umami in mm. here, so much flavor. And some people um, like to eat this as a filling for onigiri rice balls. I it's see. perfect for rice balls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or yaki mm -hmm. onigiri, grilled rice mm -hmm. balls. It's very useful. And why I'm so happy mm. you like it. 
Now we all know what furikake is, right? And of course we know furikake, so you're not going to be surprised with this one. But I also realized that a lot of people um, outside of Japan love furikake, like Erin Uber. I met up with Erin Uber and Nasha Broad in Japantown. We went to a Japanese supermarket there and she had what she called a furikake emergency. So we went to the furikake section. They had quite a you know number of variety, but not as much as Japan. I think they had about maybe one-fifth or maybe even one-sixth of the variety that we have here in Japan. And so I think um, I think you should pick up some packets of furikake because we have a huge variety and they're very, 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 very reasonable. That's right. And they have some really interesting flavors too, like potato chips. Yeah, they have potato <laughs> chips and they also have milky flavor. <laughs> they do, they do. I've never tried those though. I only I only tried the regular ones. Yeah. What is potato chip flavor? I don't potato know. Potato chips has a variety of flavor. Maybe like salty <laughs> potato? Maybe it's gonna taste like salty potato. <laughs> Sour cream onion? <laughs> Sour cream onion? I don't know. This particular furikake is only 93 yen. 70 cents. Oh, by the way, that miso was 190 yen. It's more expensive than the furikake, but still. I mean, you know, it's miso. Yeah, okay. This particular furikake is uh, nori wasabi, so seaweed wasabi flavor. Mm, and wasabi it's flavor. Full of oh, calcium. Oh. Yep. So let me um, pour a little bit of this furikake on top of some piping hot rice for you and oh. there you go i got the wasabi one because i know you usually get the the egg one the tamago one or the katsuo noritama. one the noritama, noritama. yeah so he, you know he, he he is a creature of habit so he likes to buy the same ones over and over again so i thought maybe you should try the wasabi one because this is one of my favorites mm. is it good it's good it's pretty good isn't it mm. yeah mm. I think it's good for ochazuke too. Oh yeah, ochazuke mm. by the way is rice with tea poured over it. Mm. You know, there are lots of uses for this furikake, not just over rice, but I also like to season my pasta with this. Just um, toss yeah, it yeah, 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 with yeah, yeah. a little bit of mm, pasta mm, mm, and yeah. olive oil. It's delicious. Mm. Some people like to flavor their popcorn with furikake. Ah, in Hawaii they furikake do that. Popcorn. It's called hurricane, hurricane popcorn. popcorn. Hurricane yeah. popcorn. Mm. Yeah. This is, this is wasabi flavor, mm -hmm. but don't worry, it's not so spicy. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, it's not. It's, it's not. It has a, a light, light, the very comfortable wasabi spices. Yeah, yeah, this mm. is really good. Mm. Okay, next one mm. is also something that you're not going to be surprised. And we've also done a dedicated video for this one. This is salted seaweed mm, called shio mm, kombu. Another my favorite one. I know, I know. Actually, mm. this is something that you introduced me to. Like, um, really, really. So, um, this is something that he introduced me to. Something I want to introduce you guys to if you've never tried it before. This is also multi-purpose. Um, today, we're going to eat it the most simplest way, which is right on top of rice. <laughs> it is kind of salty, so you don't want to put too much. Satoshi, why don't you teach them how you usually eat it? Because it's very salty, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it's very salty, but if you mix with this rice, the the taste will very nicely salted rice. Yes, yeah, see, mm -hmm. it, it won't be too salty. It'll be perfectly salted. Just make sure you mix it with the rice. Let it blend. Let the salt, you know, season your rice, and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. This is made with kombu, kombu seaweed. So it is salty, but it has also Umami flavor. Mm, lots of umami, which is why it's it's salty yet sweet. It's like perfectly balanced. Once again, there are many, many ways to use this. You can like mix it up in salads, you can mix it with pasta, you can make simple tsukemono, pickled vegetables with this. If you want to learn how to do that, make sure you watch the video that we did on this particular ingredient. Now, this is some information that you guys may not know about me, but I used to work as a sushi maker when I was um, 17, I was very young, 17 and 18, I was working part-time at this sushi shop and I learned how to make sushi. And so I'm pretty, pretty critical with how my sushi rice is seasoned. This packet is called Sushinoko and this is your instant sushi rice seasoning. Um, you chose it. <laughs> I did. Have you ever used this before? When I was a child. When you were a child. Mm -hmm. My parents or grandpa uh, use it. Oh, <laughs> I see. As an adult, 
I haven't used it. Oh, okay. Well, this is actually really, really convenient. Of course, if you are a professional at making your vinegar sushi rice, you know, please stick to that method. But this is a very, very easy way. And um, it's actually quite delicious. I think it's really, really, really mm -hmm. well balanced. Just mm -hmm. all the instructions on the back. All you have to do is mix one tablespoon with this much of rice. Give it a good mix. Make sure the rice is dry before you use it because when, when you um, first mix it together, it's going to be kind of um, wet. But it's supposed to be that way. You didn't do anything wrong. But you keep mixing it, it's going to evaporate. It's going to start to become sticky and drier. That's when it's ready to be used as sushi. So today, I decided to make something super simple. I'm making nori maki. And and I'm um, just with cucumber. Here in Japan, cucumber sushi is called kappamaki. One more time, repeat after us. Kappamaki. One more time. Kappamaki. There you go. That's your Japanese lesson for today. So to make it, you put some rice on top. Make sure you leave a little bit of space at the edge. And you may or may not want to add wasabi. This is totally up to you. Don't add too much though, unless you really, really want, you know, to like open up your sinuses. And then we're gonna add a cucumber with the seeds taken out. And then we're gonna roll it up like this and then cut it into six pieces. And voila, there you have it, your kappamaki. Mm. And here you go. Itadakimasu, itadakimasu. I love kappamaki. So do I. Um, usually we would dip this in a little bit of soy sauce, but unfortunately I can't find any soy sauce on this table. <laughs> we'll just eat it like this. Actually, it's okay like this. Mm. The seasoning of the sushi rice is mm. really good, don't you think? Mm. You, you used so much wasabi. <laughs> oh, you <yeah>. did? <laughs> <laughs> sushi rice forever. Mm. So nice. Isn't it? I'm amazed. I didn't use this sushi noko because the sound is a little bit fakey. Fakey. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good but stuff. I know now it's very good stuff. Can I tell you something? I also worked at a restaurant, actually a pretty high-end Japanese restaurant in mm -hmm. Hawaii mm -hmm. for three weeks mm -hmm. when I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. I quit for, you know, personal reasons. But did you know that they made sushi using this? Oh my god. They did. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which restaurant. They're still in business. Oh. But everybody loves their sushi. Mm. So, highly recommend. And this is only 95 yen. Once again, like 70 cents. I mean, a minute ago you said that you never used this because it was very fakey. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, they use no preservatives or additives. Yeah, so it's all natural. Great. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I know I'm talking a lot today, but I'm really, really excited to be sharing this with you guys and you. Mm -hmm. But you can also use this for other purposes. Like you can use this in place of vinegar to make pickled vegetables. I see. Yeah. Or mm. you can even use this in place of mayonnaise for potato salad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds weird. And that's what it says on the back. I've tried it before. It's actually pretty good. Really? Yeah. I can understand that it is good to use for pickles because mm -hmm. I, I use vinegar, salt, and sugar for pickles. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those ingredients are in here. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that's why it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I see, I yep. see. Yep. So get this. Hope you guys enjoyed part one of our supermarket food haul. Part 2 is coming up in just 2 short days, so stay tuned and press that bell icon to be notified. If you're watching this way after the fact, just click on one of the boxes on the right. Stay cool and stay happy! Bye!